Hello my wonderful blurriness. So today we're busting Bali myths. Who hasn't heard them? Um, I've seen actually this type of video quite a lot of times around YouTube and I, find, I always find it really interesting and fascinating. But what I didn't see, so I saw a lot of videos done by professional dancers who get a lot of stereotypes around their profession. I'm not a professional dancer, I'm a professional dance teacher, so it's kind of different, you know, people we're dealing with, people we meet uh, on a daily basis. And I wanted to do this, the, I wanted to gather my top 10 Bali myths I hear and, um, and break them down. Myth number one, Bali is boring and old-fashioned. I hear this all the time. I even get people giggle when I say I teach Bali for a living. I feel that most people are not educated enough on what Bali is exactly or what it's supposed to look like. So they have this idea of the romantic, sickening, sickly sweet uh, Bali performances when everything is too freely and it's all about princes and princesses which you know there's nothing wrong with that but for a lot of people it's just not their cup of tea so um, I guess and that's all they imagine you know that is not true Bali has been around for centuries um, it has been around from the 14 1500s and it's still going on strong um, and actually I feel like it's getting bigger and bigger and like everything else Bali has its fashions and uh, there are eras like in every other art form that I like in fashion you know so of course Bali back in the day you'd have these romantic you know um, all the romantic performances and uh, which we still celebrate and we still enjoy dancing and watching but it doesn't have to be that way there are so many beautiful companies one of my favorites is complexions if you've ever if you've never seen complexions check them out they're just gorgeous and you get contemporary ballet modern ballet rock ballet there are so many different options there's so many different styles of music you can dance to and it's definitely not old-fashioned it's just something that keeps growing and keeps evolving Myth number two, ballet is not for everyone. You have to be extra talented to do ballet. I get this a lot, especially from people who actually like it and want to do it, but they say, you know, I'd love to, but I'm just not good enough. I don't have it in me and all of that. And I completely disagree with that because yes, ballet is very difficult. And yes, like everything else, it comes na more naturally to some people than others. However, it's a skill that can be taught, right? It's a skill that can be acquired. So it is for everyone. All you need to do is to be, uh, to, to have your heart in it because it is difficult. So it will require a lot of commitment on your part and you just have to be ready to work hard and really, you know, pour your hand or your heart and soul into it if you want to, to progress. However, it doesn't mean that you have to have a very specific kind of talent in order to be able to do ballet. I'm not, again, I'm not talking about, you know, auditioning for a top notch ballet school. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who want to do ballet because they love it so much, you know, even professional level. This myth has been busted so many times. There are so many people who were not considered to be dancer material and yet they they made it and they became professional dancers and they were kind of the outsiders, you know, that won um, because of their hard work. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So I wholeheartedly believe that to, 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 to succeed, to, to progress, is 98% work and 2% talent. So especially if you just want to do it because you love it so much, you shouldn't worry about whether you're talented or not. Myth number three. Bali culture is toxic, ballerinas are snobbish. And let me tell you here, that's not 100% a myth. It's more of a stereotype based, like every stereotype, based on some truth. 
uh, there are definitely environments by my studios that do carry that atmosphere that clicky you know backstabby <laughs> sort of um atmosphere but it does not have to be that way and it is not that way everywhere so or if you go to a ballet studio and you you know you come across that then you probably have to find a different ballet studio you know um Unfortunately, I've definitely been there, especially as a teenager. I've definitely uh, been in, in schools like that. But you know what? Eventually, I just changed studios and eventually I found a dance studio, which was amazing. Everyone was really supported, really friendly. And although I was the newbie there, they just took me in and treated me like an equal, which is, you know, it should be a given, really. It comes down to the teacher and the slash owner of the studio. It's really, really important because, you know, she wouldn't take any of that if anyone wanted to, <laughs> to attempt to be that way. So um, just look for the right people. But definitely some of the best people I've ever met are dancers. Um, and ballet dancers specifically so not true myth number four and probably my favorite one you have to be young to do ballet again I'm not talking about you know wanted to learn ballet and then go on to audition for uh, a professional company um, let me tell you, tell you here that most ballet schools have an age limit on until when you can audition and what they look for at that particular age. So um, an example was just from the top of my head is the, the Royal Ballet School. I think um, they have a really strict kind of um, admission when it comes to auditions about the age. I mean, you could be, I don't know, like 18 and two months or something like that and you, you'd be old enough. So with someone who was born literally two months before you, they be they could get an audition. So I don't know if it's still like that because that was a very long time ago when I, I saw that, but I know that a lot of ballet companies have really strict limits on that. But again, that's only if you want to become a professional dancer, a, a professional ballet dancer to be exact. So if you just love ballet and you want to do it for you because you just, you know, that's what you want to do, <laughs> right? Your age should not stop you. In fact, I've had so many students who started in their 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, and they've progressed so much and they went from completely novice to intermediate to advanced dancers and they managed to do wonderful things in, you know, not, not as kids. So uh, your age won't stop you from progressing. You might not be able to follow a professional career, but Trust me, it won't really affect your progress the fact that you're a little bit older. Um, in fact, someone, let's say in their 50s, who's practicing every day, will be more, um, will be better than someone in their 20s who's not doing any ballet. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> or even in like a child. So, um, you will see progress. The only way to test whether the age would be an issue is if you had a time machine and you could do ballet at a young age and just travel in time and do the same thing at an older age and just compare and contrast who's doing better but that's not going to happen so there's no point in talking about it right if you want to do ballet do ballet it doesn't matter how old you are myth number five you have to be thin or you have to have a very specific body type think long limbs no curves flat chest all of those things um again I know that a lot of companies still look at the weight, still look at measurements. Should they do that? I'm not going to go there. I'm really not. This is a conversation for another day. But again, if you want to do ballet for you, it does not matter what you look like. And to be honest with you, some of us have more ability than others. And some of us struggle more than others because of, you know, the way you're born. However, especially with the knowledge we have, if you have a qualified teacher who knows how to teach people, who knows how to actually educate, not just dancing themselves, they will have a way to work around any issue you might come across. Because the beauty of being human is that we all look different. There's no, you know, unless you're a twin, 
because <laughs> nobody else looks exactly like you out there. Which means that when you take an art form, which is essentially shapes made with your body, they will look different from person to person. It doesn't mean that one is right, the other is wrong, it's just different. And yes, some people will find center things more difficult than others and the other way around. But again, there are ways to work around it. And to be honest with you, dancing and ballet is the best way to learn your body and learn exactly what's going on. And um, if you really, you know, tune in, you don't have to be anything to do ballet. If you have a body and you're, if you have a healthy body, and you want to do ballet, you should do ballet, trust me. And to be completely honest with you, as a teacher, I love having dancers, I love teaching dancers who don't look identical, and I get to adjust and tweak things to make, to make them look good for them, you know? It's like buying fast fashion or buying a tailor-made gown, you know? The tailor-made will always be better, so that's how I see it. I, to be completely honest with you, just having 50 dancers who look exactly the same, the way they move, the way they, you know, they are, it's just, it could be even a little bit boring. I find it a little bit boring sometimes. Different is good. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, ballet transforms from within.